So now that we've covered the best type of structure to use, we must look at where you're going to be selling as this will determine whether or not you require more than one entity to get your business up and running quickly and efficiently. The truth is that you can of course choose to only start by selling in the US or only in Europe, or you may decide that you want to get everything up and running at the same time. To help you make your choice, it's obvious to say that the more marketplaces you sell in, the more opportunity you have to sell your items to more people at the same time. Now, depending on where you live, you may require additional entities and logistics, as I mentioned, and there certainly are pros and cons to any of these options. I'd like to break these down for you so that you can make an informed decision. Let's begin by discussing the pros and cons on selling in North America. On the pro side of the equation, this is still the biggest single country on Amazon. Don't listen to anyone who says there's no opportunity here. E-commerce still accounts for less than 10% of retail sales in total in the US, so the opportunity here will continue to grow. Amazon themselves are investing billions in fulfillment infrastructures to take full advantage of this growing opportunity. Another big pro is that there is just one sales and management approach, which significantly simplifies the running of the business. This will become a big pro when you begin to scale and are focusing on keeping all your items in stock. There are no real language barriers in the US market as the market is English speaking. For the vast majority of our students, English is their first language. So this makes the process very simple. The marketplace itself is very established. The FBA program runs smoothly and customers are more than aware of Amazon's Prime program. As a matter of fact, there are over 50 million who use the Prime program in the US alone. This is huge considering the total population is approximately 317 million people. There are less currency issues as every sale is made in US dollars and there are fewer residency constraints for you as a seller. You see, Amazon requires you to be a resident in a particular country to be able to sell in the US. Amazon continually add more countries in here all the time, which is particularly good if your country of residence isn't there yet. You may say, what if I live in a country that's not on Amazon's list, but I have a US company? The reality is that this is still wouldn't be accepted by Amazon as they require the beneficial owner to live in an accepted country. You can check this by Googling what countries of residence amazon.com accepts. None that this list is actually different from the European markets. Now onto the cons. Firstly, due to the fact that you're only selling in one country, this means that you're essentially only going to ever deal with one consumer base. This, in essence, limits the growth you can experience in your business and increases your potential risk as your product must work in that market. Next, you don't get the opportunity to experience country multiplication. This alone changed my business. When I was able to sell my items in more than one market, I was able to have more customers in more countries buy my items at the exact same time. This is the engine that makes the rule of five so powerful. Without it, you can still build a very profitable business. It just can't scale up quite as quickly. There are plenty of established sellers. Now, it's a good thing that the market is established. However, a significant number of sellers makes some markets overly competitive. That said, there is still plenty of room in this market. It's simply something to be aware of and accept, but there's no doubt that compared to the less competitive European markets, it's a bit of a con. Next, there is more logistics required, as you will find that Amazon require you to ship your items to multiple fulfillment centers at the same time, due to the geographic size of the market. In Europe, at the time of recording this program, you can ship all items to the same fulfillment center in one country and use the European fulfillment network to ship items out to individual customers from one location. In other words, you can stock all your items in, say, the UK, and then Amazon will ship items to German customers and French customers from that one location as orders are made. This brings us to the final con then, in that there is no similar North American fulfillment network. If you want to sell to, say, Mexico and Canada, you'll have to ship your items directly to those countries to be able to do so. You'll only do this in Europe when your business is considerably larger. Now let's take the pros and cons of selling in Europe. First off, the big pro to selling in Europe is that you get access to country multiplication immediately. All that's required is a simple translation of your items to get things started. It's very appealing and gives you the ability to sell your items to more customers at the same time, diluting your risk significantly and increasing your flip time. That is the amount of time it takes your items to sell out in full from the time of ordering. Next, there's a varied consumer base 
as you get the opportunity to sell to so many countries at the same time. Remember, you won't only sell to German, French, Spanish, Italian and UK customers. No, you'll also get access to the countries that surround those markets. For example, Austrian customers buy from Amazon.de, Portuguese customers buy from Amazon in Spain and so on. There's no doubt that these are growing marketplaces and will continue to be for years. Not only will the current marketplaces grow, but Amazon are growing the number of countries that they're in at the same time. You'll see country after country join the network over the next few years, which will of course increase your customer reach every single time. Compared to the North American market, Europe has a larger overall population. These numbers alone will make the market become more and more valuable as less internet savvy markets move to the internet to buy products in the coming years. This is happening right now extremely rapidly. There are some well-established markets here as well. The UK, Germany and France, for example, are very well-established markets and have millions of customers buying from them every day of the week. There's less logistics required compared to the US, as I outlined a few moments ago. I also talked about the power of the European Fulfillment Network. This really is a huge pro for you and your business when you trade in Europe. And finally, the Unified European Account makes listing products and managing your business very simple. Essentially, you can manage all five European countries from one dashboard within Amazon. You simply toggle between countries by selecting the market you'd like to manage from a drop-down menu at the top of the Seller Central account. Now on to the cons. The first big con is the issue of residency constraints. As I mentioned earlier in this module, where you live has a bearing on where you have permission to sell on Amazon. Compared to the US, there are currently less accepted countries of residence in Europe on Amazon's list. This is something that Amazon are updating regularly, but it can be a barrier if you live in countries that Amazon have yet to accept. Next, there are language barriers. Thankfully, this isn't a big con, but the requirement of translations when creating your listings, as well as the fact that product research in these countries is made more difficult due to the language barrier, is certainly a con. Some countries are not well established. Countries such as Italy and Spain can bring sales, of course, but compared to the better established markets, these ones are considerably smaller and will take a couple of years to scale up to the level of the likes of the UK, Germany and France. Next, there are taxation issues. I'll go into these when I discuss VAT in more detail. However, it's important to know for now that using non-European entities will pose significant issues for you with VAT or VAT as you'll be required to register for VAT in each country you make a sale in due to the fact that you're using a non-European entity. There are ways to deal with this, but it's something to absolutely be aware of, especially if you're using, for example, a US LLC to trade in Europe or a company from Australia that's proprietary limited, for example. I don't recommend that strategy. I recommend having an EU entity in place. Again, I'll go into more detail shortly on this, but for now, know that this is simply a part of doing business in Europe. Currency exchange is certainly a con as well. Again, I recommend using World First or Payoneer to offset the effect of currency exchange, but it does pose some additional complications that while they're easily dealt with, still make this a con. Now, let's look at selling in both North America and Europe at the same time. And when I say North America, I'm really referring to just Amazon.com as the other markets are currently difficult to do business in and are small markets with limited impact at the moment. As always, we'll start with the pros. First off, selling in both markets gives you vast country multiplication. It actually makes a rule of six rather than a rule of five possibility, which would, all things equal, give you monthly profits of over $22,000 as opposed to the $18,750 net profit from a rule of five business. Next, selling in all of these markets gives you an ultimate consumer base. You have hundreds of millions of potential customers to sell to, which will help you scale things up a lot faster. There has and will continue to be exponential marketplace growth as more and more countries in these markets become available for us to sell in, with us being able to use EFN in Europe to make the stocking and fulfillment of items a lot simpler. There's a huge combined population reach which continues to grow as more markets become available for you to sell in. Due to the fact we're combining continents, you'll have access to plenty of established markets to launch and scale your products in. 
There's also less logistics required for reasons I've already outlined in Europe. Generally, you'll only send to more than one fulfillment center if you're selling more than one item, and at least one of those items is what Amazon deems oversized. The reward risk ratio increases dramatically due to the size of the customer base. As mentioned, you'll have a global product launch strategy, which will allow you to split a shipment from China and send inventory to both the US and Europe at the same time from the same stock pool, further reducing your risk on an item. Being a global seller, helps you to effectively reduce the effect of currency fluctuation. This is something that we'll all simply have to get used to as we all become more and more globalized thanks to the power of the internet. Let's finish off by going through some of the cons to selling in all markets. First off, you may require additional bank accounts and business entities when selling in all of these markets. You'll definitely require a European Amazon seller account and a US seller account. We won't go into this now, but as I've already alluded to, depending on where you're resident, you may require additional entities to sell in these markets, which is of course a bit of a con. As I've already outlined, there are residency constraints and language barriers as well, which may be a problem depending on where you're a resident. Again, some of the newer countries to launch Amazon marketplaces aren't as well established and generally won't produce quite as many sales as the larger, more established countries. That said, we may have some students do extremely well in certain countries that would be considered less established. It really comes down to the product and the demand for that product. Next, I talked about taxation issues, particularly VAT issues in Europe. Now, these issues are certainly not something you can't deal with, far from it. The reason they're a con is because they pose some complications, but by no means do they make anything impossible or even overly difficult. Finally, launching in both Europe and North America requires more investment. This goes without saying, as you'll require a decent number of units to be able to test both markets accurately. Now, the ultimate goal is to sell globally, but you may choose to start in fewer marketplaces, especially if you've never started a business before and feel nervous about launching in too many marketplaces too quickly. You may, however, ask me, Jeff, where should I start selling? My answer is always one word, globally. This is the advice I'd give anyone who asked my true opinion. Now you may wonder where to start selling if you live outside the US or Europe and your country of residence is eligible to sell on Amazon. In this case, I'd really leave this up to you. There's no real right answer. You've got to look at the pros and cons and make that call. 